Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five-minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. It is the 20, like I say, great teen healing experience. And this was created as an outlet to open the door to inner healing growth and developing a closer relationship with God. Now guys, last month was the first month. I do a different topic every third week of the month. Last month's topic was process. And today we are starting heartbreak. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the other topics for the rest of the year so that, you know, if you would like to continue on and beyond the podcast, definitely hit the link below this podcast and get the book. If you hear this list and you hear a couple different ones that you maybe want to work on and, you know, you don't want everything, then I have books for each topic. I have a workbook for each topic if that's all you want. But if you just want to go ahead and get the workbook that take, takes care of all 12 topics, which is what I suggest, then please get it. And then once you do that, you get access to the private Facebook group and it's popping up in there. So I definitely want you guys to check it out. And I definitely want you to know that this is your safe space. And uh, if you are in your feelings, perfect, because this is the time and the place to be in your feelings. If you caught feelings, join us. If you catching them, join us. If you are knee deep in your emotions, join us. Because this is the place where you are not going to get ridiculed for being in your feelings. You are not going to feel no type of way because this is a spot for it. We are all about healing and feelings and we want you to feel. You have to feel your feelings in order to get through. This is what they're there for. So here, this is encouraged. So let me tell you guys. So again, we have process, heartbreak, childhood, the past, mistrust, failure, sinking ships, family, loss, abandonment, spirit, and mind. Now, each one of those topics, we go hard. We talk about five different topics in that one week on that particular subject. So again, Let's say you look, you heard the list and you don't want any of that, but you don't mind following through just with the podcast, hit the link below the podcast again, guys, and get the breakdown. There's also a a healing workbook that's just a breakdown. And what I have is a 60 questions. You'll get all 60 questions that we're going to talk about throughout the year. It's five questions per month. It's 12 months in a year, so you get 60 questions. You get all of the information that goes with that. And I mean, it's just a breakdown. If that's what you want, then so be it. And I'm excited for that. So whatever you want, I want to be able to provide you with that so that you can follow along on a deeper level. Because y'all, the cool thing about actually having the workbooks is that you get to really write down what it is that you're going through. You 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 make it real. You make it plain. Like Habakkuk chapter two verses one through three. You write the vision. You wait. You make it plain, and then you 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 begin to learn about God. And when it seems like He's tarrying, and you know you've you've inked it. You you know you, you, I like to say if you think it, ink it. That's one of my things that I say, and I just feel like it's important for you to do that because. In this kind of process, if you do not, if you just let stuff, if you just keep listening to stuff and you don't really mark any goals for change or you don't try to systematically create something for yourself so that you can evolve and elevate from where you're at, then you're, it's going to be a cyclical process and it's going to be more and more things that you have to heal. And that's why the writing part is so good. Listen, if, and I don't, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I'm going to say it again just in case because I can't remember, but If you get any of the workbooks, you also get a free PDF downloader. And what you do is you upload the workbook to that. And guess what? You can just type your answers in there. You don't even have to print the papers out. You know, now I think, you know, for me, I print out my pages because I just like it to be real. That's just how I get down. But it's because I'm a writer. But it's also a real blessing to me, too, if I'm on the go and I have to upload it and just type some stuff in there while I'm on the move. If I have a thought, I'm like, oh, wow, that is something that I realized, because this is what you're going to find out in this kind of series. You're going to start to figure out that you are going to start peeling back layers and we might talk about something today. And in three days, the answer comes 
or something that you've been pondering might come an hour from now. And you just want to be able to have that space so that you can begin to fill in those blanks. Because let me tell you what happens at the end of each chapter in the workbook. There's a prayer. There's, there's some questions and there's a prayer. And once you're able to bring all of your issues up, you can literally read what you did and what you have and what you're trying to work out. And then you can allow God to, to move that thing around and shape you and mold you into something else so that you can get past it. You know, one of my favorite lines that I say all the time is from a Tyler Perry movie. In fact, it was from his first movie and it was um, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. And he I think it was Shamar Moore's character. And he said, um, I'm going to love you past your pain. And that for me was just really deep. And that's what this is. This is the premise of this type of experience, because you have to learn how to love yourself past your pain. You have to learn how to do that. If you do not find a way to take better care of yourself inwardly, I don't care how fine you are on the outside. I don't care how many people say that you're gorgeous. You're so handsome. Oh, wow. It doesn't matter. If you don't know how to love yourself past your pain, you will not be able to live your best life. You know, that's the, that's the ticket. Now, oh, baby, she out here living her best life. Oh, he living his best life. You know, that's the thing right now. And I actually love it. I think to me, that is one of my favorite things to say because it's so positive. You know what I'm saying? It's so positive when somebody can see, say, oh, Lord, they living their best life. I love it. It just, it, it tickles me every time I hear it because it's so positive. And I really love that to just create an atmosphere for positivity. But listen, guys, you are responsible for that. Nobody else is responsible for that. And, and let me tell you another thing. Everything we going through, we walking through together. So you are not by yourself. I'm literally invisibly <laughs> holding your hand through this. We're holding each other's hands. God just put it on my heart to put it out there. But this is not because I'm greater or better or anything like that. I may have had more experiences and maybe God has allowed me to maybe articulate how to get through some of these things as I get through them as well on some topics. But listen, you should be encouraged and I want you to be confident. In that if you have told yourself you need to at least be a part of something like this, let me just say God bless you in advance. And let me just say it's about to go down for you because this is the one thing the enemy don't want you to do. He don't want you to listen to what I'm saying. He don't want you to listen to what you saying. He wants you to listen to what he's saying. And if we're speaking life, if I'm speaking life, you listen, listen to the pastor, you listen to your, your mentors, to your, your good positive friendships, you listen to other uh. You listen to YouTube, you listen to whatever it is, you know, a, a great conversation with, with somebody who adds value to your life. You're doing all of these things. This is his number one goal. He doesn't want you to to do any of those things. He wants you to wallow. He does not want you to be the person that God has called you to be. He wants you to be submerged in your pain and he does not want you to execute a life of peace. He does not want you to execute a life of joy. This is his number one thing. He comes to steal kill and destroy that is what his main goal is so with that being said i am going to explain something to you and i, I did it in the process and i'm going to do it again in this now listen to me because i give it to you straight no chase i'm not about to sell you no wooden nickels i go hard in these series because if we tap to if we excuse me if we tiptoe around the issues if we if I if I sugarcoat the issues, then it wouldn't be a shortcut. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be the raw and uncut. And when I say shortcut, there are things that took me so many years to go through and to learn that the Lord is allowing me to package some of this stuff to give it to you so that you don't have to go through it. You can see the telltale signs. You can see what's going on. You know, and then you have the option to say, you know what? Well, let me follow this. You know, if the Lord is confirming in your spirit, hey, I need to watch this. I need to make sure that I, you know, I handle my business. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing 
that, you know, this information was given to me and I could see I might be walking into something similar. Well, God, you let me know. Do I need to take this advice? This advice was presented to me and I think it could cause me from getting my heart broken again. Should I listen to this? Should I think about this? Should I pray about this? These are the kind of things that these types of uh, situations are set up for on this podcast. So I just want you guys to know this is not personal and is I'm not again, this is I'm taking the same licks that you take and trust me when I tell you this is not me trying to be higher than you or belligerent or anything of the like this is genuinely we got to do tough love right now y'all the world is faced with tons of calamity there's so many things going on that are not great things that are beyond our control but when it comes to who you are you can be great And in fact, you are already great. You were born with greatness inside. So either one or two things has you on here. Number one, either you know you're great and you feel like you lost it. Or number two, you know you're great on the inside, but you have yet yet to access it. And for this particular week is because something has happened with your broken heart. Your heart, you have a heart issue. And that's what's taking you here today. So a couple of things. Every time we do one of these, we do questions, okay? So today's question is, who broke your heart? Now, I really want you to take a minute before we get deep into that. And I want you to really think about who broke your heart. Now, let me explain. When I say who broke your heart, this could be a man or a woman in a relationship style you can feel you know anything i want you to really think about it don't rush through this okay think about maybe uh you know sometimes people can break your heart in friendship my heart's been broken in friendships many times so i don't want you to i don't want you to reduce this to romantic love because that's not what it is but if that is what it is now that's great too but let's just Think about the times you were your heart broken. You ever seen, you know, sometimes you'd be like, oh my God, I went to my favorite store and it, it, it closed down forever. They discontinued it or whatever. I'm, my heart is broken. I mean, it could even be stuff like that. Things that you may have relied on, things that you may have appreciated and loved over time. And, um, you know, you just felt heartbroken when it ended or whatever the case may be. Um, some of you have felt heartbreak because something began. You know, and some have felt heartbreak because something ended. So with whatever end of the spectrum you're on, I want you to think about that for a moment. So like I said, I go hard. So I'm going to just jump right in. So y'all, when we think about a broken heart, we think about pain. We think about turmoil. You know, most times we feel like whoever the person is that let us down we feel that they were irresponsible with our heart. Okay? And again, some, some of y'all not going to like me when I say this. But one thing that is the common denominator with your broken heart is that if you keep feeling a broken heart, you're the common denominator. If everybody you encounter or every other person you encounter ends up breaking your heart, you are the common denominator. I'm not trying to make you mad, but what I want you to think about is this. We serve a God that's a healer. Okay. We serve a God that says that he is nigh to the brokenhearted. He's near the brokenhearted. We serve a God that says in the book of John, do not let your heart be troubled. Okay. So he is very intentional about what he feels about your heart. Okay. But he's also very intentional about telling you to be, look, be sweet as a dove, but be wise as a serpent. Like pay attention to what's going on. And the reason why this conversation has to take this route about quote unquote, who broke your heart? Because the answer is you broke your heart. And then you might say, well, Robin, you can't say that because my daddy left me. My mama left me or such and such. Okay, no, wait, let me, let me explain what I mean by that. If you haven't listened to my podcast last Friday on uh, Will Smith and we talk about fault and responsibility and I call it all yours. That's the name of it. It's all yours. 
I want you to go back and listen to it because this is what this was kind of a segue. So that that's kind of a good precursor to this week, because let me tell you something about broken hearts. The person who did it is at fault, but it is your responsibility to get past it. Now, you can waste your time with that whole list that you've written of who has broken your heart. And you can mull over that list and you can be angry with them. Now, let me tell you a couple things. I'm not a professional therapist, but I can tell you this. I can share this with you because I've walked it out. I have experience. So I'm not just telling you something because I'm trying to talk on a podcast. I'm telling you because I've cried the tears. I've not only had the broken heart, but I've broken the hearts. And the thing that you have to understand is this. The devil don't love you. He hates you. And so any kind of way he can infuse something in you to allow you to attract somebody to yourself or be a part of a situation to make you feel defeated, to set you up for a heartbreak, he's going to do that. Okay. And again, like I said, by no means am I saying this is all your fault. In fact, Typically, when there's heartbreak involved, you know, we play a part in it some kind of way. And usually we're not completely, you know, just free from any wrongdoing. But the reason why I have a, a, a series like this is because this is the part some of you, like myself, when I was going through, I didn't want to hear. What were the red flags? What were the signs? Why did I keep ignoring what they kept giving me? And I'm angry. I have a broken heart and that's why I say, you know what? I had to come to the realization in some of those situations, I broke my own heart because God kept trying to tell me, no, Robin, this is what love looks like. That's not love. I don't know who told you that that was what it was, but that's not what it is. And now you keep praying to me to bless something that I didn't want you to be in to begin with. Oh, but. But God, he's a man of God or no, God, she's my best friend. And then you end up getting your heart broken because they stab you in the back and betray you or they leave you or he's not what you thought of. You know, if it's a guy listening, she's not what you thought of, whatever the case may be. Like you just get so stuck in that space because you're like, oh, my God, you know, they hurt me. They played me. And you let me tell you all something. One of the major things to healing is ownership and responsibility. So when somebody hurts you and they harm you and they've broken your heart, you need to acknowledge that. So let me be clear about that. We're not going to act like, hey, you just forget that. You need to take care of yourself and go ahead and move on. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying to you is this. You have to acknowledge what they did. If you got a kick, scream, cry, write out what they did just to purge it out your system. Once you do that, you have got to create a situation where you and your father, because it's only God. God is a healer of the broke of the broken heart, not another human being. When you create something, you create a situation and you say, okay, God, I'm going to every day. I want to just pray for 30 minutes about healing my heart. You have to start doing things that you're not doing, because let me tell you what normally happens when we get a broken heart. You know how I mentioned to you guys before about making sure you go to the throne before you go to the phone. Well, guess what you what you discover with that, y'all? Typically, you get a broken heart and you got to go tell somebody. And that's what most of us do. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know that's what I did. You know, when I got older, I stopped doing that, though. And I'll explain that to you. You know, on, in fact, that's going to be I'm going to talk to you about that right there. So if you're listening and taking notes, put a little pen right there. And I'm going to tell you why, as I matured, I stopped running to other people. When I was having a broken heart and I changed how I, I navigated through that. And then it actually stopped happening because I had gotten myself to a place where it stopped happening. So just put a footnote there that I mean, uh, put a bullet there. We're definitely going to revisit that. But anyway, typically the first thing we do when we get a broken heart is uh, we, you know, we either tell somebody what's going on or we begin bashing immediately. Now, I personally believe that's why it's so important that you listen to the first month on process, because depending on how you process your heartbreak, that is going to determine how you set yourself up for the next relationship. OK, so going back to today's question, who broke your heart? I said a few minutes ago, you broke your heart. Now, let me explain what I meant by that. 
If somebody came and assaulted you or violated you or left you or did something to, to show you that they did not love you or mean you well and they abused you or your situation. No, that is not your fault. How could you break your own heart from that? Okay, so let's be very clear about that. But this is where it becomes your ownership and responsibility. Once that person has violated you, once that person has broken your heart, you've acknowledged that you've done whatever you needed to do to take care of that part. If you continue on focusing on what they did to you, you will have double the broken heart. Because guess what you have to understand? If you don't look at your situation and say, listen, my heart is in me. So I control who has the access to my heart. If this person has violated me before in whatever shape or form, again, they left me, they cheated on me, they lied, or they didn't do any of that. They just left me and they didn't want to be bothered. Whatever the case may be, you, you're broken at this point. So that's what we're focusing on. If you have that broken heart and you've already acknowledged what they've done, either they, you know, and again, they may not have said they were sorry or whatever the case may be. But if you get to that space... And you don't say, I got to pick myself up and I have to figure out how to move on from this. I can guarantee you the next thing that's going to happen to you is another broken heart. And it will not be at the hands of someone else. It will be at the hands of you. Okay. Who broke your heart? Go back to what you attract. What do you like? What is your type? If let's talk a little bit about romantic relationships now. And I know some people are not going to like this, but I'm going to have to keep it 100. When you start getting a broken heart from the same type of cat just over and over and over again, the same type of woman over and over and over again, you know what? You are always the common denominator. We have said this before, we're going to say it again. You are the common denominator. Ask yourself what is it about this type that makes me think that it fits me? What What are the characteristics of this particular type of person? And every time they break my heart, I, I build myself back up and I go find somebody just like them. What is it? Is it because, you know, it's so many different things. Some people just like, you know, a, a certain type with their looks. They got to be a certain type, a uh, certain height, a certain weight. Uh, you know, certain amount of muscles, some, you know, her hair got to be like this, her butt got to be like that. Everybody has their own way of perceiving these things, right? But what is it for you? If you are listening and you are genuinely trying to get past the heartbreak, you're gen genuinely trying to live your best life. You're genuinely trying to get to what God has for you. You have to get past your type. Who broke your heart? The question for today. Sometimes the who is what they do. Don't put it like this. They don't even have to do anything. It's just who they are. It literally comes with a broken heart. Like they don't even have to say or do anything. They have all the characteristics of your type. And it's just a, it's a, it's a no brainer. They're going to do it. And let me tell you something. I want to talk to my sisters right quick who listening. One of the biggest red flags and problems that consistently happens is, oh, he a man of God. He loved God. Y'all, you got to wake up from that. You have a purpose mate. And what I th I'm going to tell you something I used to be afraid of. You get so scared thinking that, oh, God, go give me somebody ugly. He go give me somebody that I'm not attracted to. Yo, he gives us life and life more abundantly. He gives us exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. So he not going to give us somebody we don't like. And I had to understand that. I'm telling you, when I started to understand that my type wasn't necessarily about how somebody looked and this is just me personally it wasn't necessarily about the way somebody looked it was about how they were and who they are and I kept getting stuck on that I was attracted to a particular type of person and it, it, it was because I was I've always been I've always like very attractive men I'm not gonna lie but I've, al I've always like uh intellectual guys I always like smart guys and I think that that's a part of me being who I am and that is going to be one of the main characteristics of my husband I know that for sure because that's a part of what fuels me and that's a part of us being purpose mates together 
But there were certain elements and certain things that I required that were just ridiculous. Because every time one of these types of guys will come up, I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. Here we go. And then it would always end up foolishly. And when I woke up one day, I was like, wait a minute, Robin, this is a pattern. Why you keep talking to these dudes? And honestly, if I'm very transparent, there was a quote unquote particular type of guy that always seemed to be in my life or, you know, not even necessarily dating them like that or, you know, doing anything like that. But just they were just always around me. And I realized that's what like me. They were attracted to me. And I think sometimes we get caught up in the guys that like us or some, you might be an attractive person and somebody might say, oh, you know, she going to get somebody like that or he going to get somebody like that. And people are not really understanding that it's not even about none of that. And of course, in our flesh, it's hard to separate ourselves from that. Trust me, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir when I say that it's hard for me to separate myself from that because you don't want no you don't want nobody that you feel is not attractive you know that that's a struggle for anybody because the truth of the matter is we're human beings we're in flesh so we have to be attracted to you you know what i'm saying so you you have to you have to understand that when it comes to the god you serve god is going to give you the person that's designed for you you might not even look at them like that you know what i'm saying but they'll have all of the characteristics that you have i'm gonna tell you I had the biggest wake up call in my life because God was trying to show me. He was like, no, Robin, like you need to, you need to expand what you're thinking about. Sure. He'll be intelligent, but what if he's a businessman? What if he's an entrepreneur? What if he's the things that you weren't thinking about? You were thinking about guys who did this, this, and this. What if this guy is not even into that, but he's still fine. He's still attractive. He, you know, he got it going on. He, he loves me. He loves you, you know, like, and, and, and so the last two, let me see, maybe two, three years, I've had to open open up to that and it became something where I'm like man this is actually more fitting for me but before then I was just my mind was on other things and it was something I didn't even really want to admit to myself but it comes back to the question who broke your heart you got to ask yourself especially in romantic relationships the who is for you the who is for you you can list everybody's name but they only got access to you because you allowed them who broke your heart is more about you, not them. Because whoever that who is, you can feel his or her name in the blank. It's because you allowed them to come in and have that relationship with you. And if you know they're, they're a type that you're accustomed to, I mean, you get it how you live. And that's how we say it out here. You get it how you live. Because here is the thing. It's too many people out here saying scriptures and they know God, but they're not living right. You know, we we it's like this generation wants to quote unquote say it loves God, but nobody really want to do the work. And people don't understand you cannot be in a relationship and get married to somebody and Christ is not at the center. It, especially if you are a Christian and you get blessed in your marriage, you have a, a, a priest or a pastor or, or a bishop or somebody bless your ceremony and marry you guys. Listen, the Bible talks about the threefold cord, okay? It's you, them, and Jesus. Like, you you cannot do it by yourself. It, it, it's, God is in everything that you do. And too many times, we want to take it out, and then we want to manipulate the situation based on how we want it. And guess what? We will not be healed like that. You cannot come to the healing of a broken heart when your mind is constantly on what you think you're supposed to have. You keep getting what you think you're supposed to have and you keep ending up with a broken heart because it always goes back to who broke your heart and you are responsible for the who. That is the bottom line. And I know you're not going to like me saying that, but I had to hear it first. I had to say it to myself first and I hated it. And to be honest, when it first came to my attention, I was mad at the person because I had a good friend who brought it to my attention. And honey, let me tell you this little girl, this girl had charts and graphs. <laughs> I never forget. We went to lunch one day and she just, just, she just, cause she ambushed me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what is this? And this was probably... This was probably like maybe 2014, I think this happened. And probably by like the fall going into 2015, that's when I started, my eyes just started opening. I'm like, man, things are different. And by the fall of 2015, that's when it was like, oh, whoa, like this is new. Like, whoa, okay, this is what God is talking about. I like this, but I didn't even know I would like this. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm going to tell y'all something else, okay? Trust me when I tell you. No situation is perfect. 
But whoever God has for you, if it's who God has for you, listen to me clearly. I'm not saying who you have for you. But if you are fortunate enough to be in such a place of humility and understanding before the Lord that you are willing to receive your purpose mate and the person that God has for you. I say it all the time, your person. If you have finally gotten to yourself at a place of peace and you are ready to receive that person, you will absolutely be attracted to them. Trust me when I tell you. You know, because, and, and, and listen, they're going to be attracted to you too. They're going to see you and be like, oh my God. You know, y'all, I don't know if y'all know, some of y'all know, I'm sure, but um, when Dream, Cur Dream Girls came out and uh, what's his name? Um, Jamie Foxx, he did that song, when I first saw you. <laughs> He's like, I said, oh my, and every time I hear that song, I'm like, man, that is a dream. Like every girl wants a guy to see her and be like, oh my God, like, whoa. And they, they, they want him to have that feeling about her. You know what I'm saying? And, and for me, when I started to transition and see that God was going to give me somebody that he had for me and who was going to be amazing and just an just incredible human being, I knew that I was going to wait for that. Because see, that's a desire of my heart. Do you realize when you keep getting with people that's outside of the will of God, you can't even access the desires of your heart like that. God can't give it to you because you're you're putting yourself in a situation where it's, it's, it's polluted. God is not going to give you something pure and just and righteous in a polluted situation. That's why the children of Israel kept going around and round and round and round in circles because they couldn't get unstuck. They could not get themselves to a place of moving forward and trust me, preaching to the choir, that's literally my life story. You know, you can't get to another place because you want what you want. You want these desires of your heart. You know, you want the, when I first saw you, you want that guy, you want that girl, but guess what? You can't get them because you're too busy playing with your type. And again, your type has to go with the who. Who is it that you keep attracting? You like thugs? You like nerds, you like ball players, you like rich dudes, you like quiet dudes. Listen, a lot of times, guys, what we think we want is usually something that hurts us and it and it, and it's at our detriment. It it, it comes it, it comes to us in a package that we like because y'all the enemy likes to send counterfeits. This is what he likes to do. This is what he specializes in. He wants you to like somebody that fits all the bells and whistles, but they are not really who God has for you. Okay. Again, who broke your heart? You have to ask yourself. And if you are really honest with yourself about who these people are, what are their characteristics? Why does it repeatedly happen? Then you will see that you are responsible for the who. No, you're not responsible for their actions. No, you're not responsible if they leave you or if they cheat on you. Absolutely not. And I would never tell you to take the L for them like that because if they mistreated you, they did wrong. Whether you welcome them in or not. Sorry. There's no exceptions for that because if somebody hurt you, God got to deal with them for that. But what I will say is this. If you keep liking people and bringing people in that that's womanizing and running around or she just she can't stop talking to every dude she see, you know, if they lying and they don't keep their word, they say they're going to do this. They never show up. Like if you keep talking to people like that who don't have the character of God. To the world, they may have the character. They may be getting all the attention from everybody else. Or they may be the person in their family. Everybody think is so great, but then behind closed doors, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The who has to do with you. And that's why I love this series because people people see that question and they think, oh, who? Okay, well, oh, I'm going to write everybody's name down. He did me that. Mm -mm -mm -mm, honey. See, God had to flip that thing around because everything we talk about this week is going to be about you being better. And trust me, the harder the harder classes are, uh, I'm going to say the, the harder episodes, so to speak, because it's not a class, but the hardest episodes will be the, the first couple of like today, tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. And then we're going to get lighter as the week ends. But I got to go for blows in the beginning, because if you keep with the, 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 the disillusionment of believing that these people hurt you and they're so bad and you just write down everything wrong with them, then you're missing the point. Because guess what? When they're gone, you're still going to be stuck with you. And if your heart is still broken and you're mad at them, you're going to be looking at them rolling off in the sunset with somebody else. 
Okay, so that's why you have to figure out for you how you gonna work this thing out, how you gonna walk this out, because you have to take responsibility for that. Yes, it's their fault. It's what they did, and we understand that. We're not diminishing that. We're not saying anything like that. But you have got to get past it, and you have to understand that you are responsible for the who. You are responsible for the who. This is not about writing the names. Yeah, I told you that, but I told you that on purpose. Because now if you did write those names, look at those names now after what we've discussed. You should start seeing those names a little differently. And guess what? If you close your eyes, they're all going to be the same person. Because the the God does not break our heart. The only time it's okay to have a broken heart if it's, if it's before the Lord for the Lord. Let me say that again. The only time it's okay to have a broken heart is to have it for the Lord before the Lord. Okay? Meaning, your heart has to be broken for him. Because when your heart breaks for God, then that starts the fear of God. And then that starts you not wanting to be a part of anything that's going to keep you from God. And y'all, what you're missing is the very thing that I kept missing. The very relationships I thought were, oh, well, he loves God and he's a man of God. Those situations ended up keeping me from God because it became an idol. It became all of my focus. And it's not what God wants from us. When God sends you that person, it is healthy. It is the timing is right everything is is put together the way it needs to be put together because God operates a certain way when his hand is on something there's a sweetness there's a genuineness no it doesn't mean that everything is perfect but it's perfect in his sight he's going to make sure that your heart is not troubled in that situation he's going to make sure that their flaws and their quirks and the qualities that you're like oh they get on my nerves you still gonna love me like you still my baby though like it's still all good we do that so many times still in those dysfunctional relationships and it makes you think that that dysfunction is right. It makes you think that, oh, well, that's what he do. He going to come around. It's going to be all right. And you know what? You're going to end up doing that, realizing that person is not treating you the way you need to be treated. And then you're going to be looking up crazy like a deer in headlights like, what happened? Well, what happened is you, first of all, you didn't give yourself time to heal. And I'm going to tell you another misconception people have with the who. People think, well, I ain't had a relationship in two years. I'm ready for one. But if you didn't do no healing, you still... Listen, the person from two years later could still be a rebound. How about that? I think people think, oh, they just jump right into a relationship with somebody. No, sweetie, listen. A rebound can still be two, three years later if you didn't do any work to clean up the mess that was made before that person came. If you thought just not talking to nobody and quote unquote living your best life, doing all of this stuff was cool, that's great in theory. But a part of living your best life is getting your healing on. That's the part people don't want to tell you. It's not people taking trips and looking pretty and looking fine and, you know, oh, I got I got all of these other things going on. I'm telling y'all, this is what I personally learned and one day I started talking to somebody about it and I realized I wasn't by myself there was so many people coming into that revelation the same one you guys are coming into today you're going to start realizing it doesn't matter how many accolades you have it doesn't matter how much money you have how successful you are it doesn't matter what you attain if you do not clean up your mess when you move to the the next situation you still have mess The mess does not magically go away. It did not magically appear, so it will not magically disappear. So sometimes that other broken heart is already, it's just, it's, you're doomed from the start because you did not do the work. And y'all, as we wrap up today on the who, okay, now I do want to address the actual names you wrote if you wrote down some names, if you thought about some people. And I mentioned this on Friday, so I'm going to remind y'all again. Make sure you check out the mentor from afar with Will Smith because I talked about this there. But listen to me good, y'all. Listen. Sometimes you have to be okay with an apology you never get. If you keep holding on because, man, they played me. It was their fault they should have did this. You might be miserable for the rest of your life because there are some people who do not have the capacity 
to rise up and give you what they genuinely deserve you. And that's a simple apology. And I'm sorry, a simple acknowledgement. No, you're not crazy. I actually did play you. And let me tell you, there's so many people right now because they get so much attention. They literally will be like, well, I never said that. So since I never said that, it don't count. Knowing that they did all of the actions, they did all of the insinuations. They did. It's like playing mind games. And even though they know they did that, they feel like because they never quote unquote said anything, it doesn't count. But this is why I tell y'all all the time I post it on my IG. God see everything. So you don't have to own up to it. You can act like they can. In fact, they can act like you're crazy. They can act like you don't have it all together. They can act like you cooked it up yourself. But let me tell you something about the God we serve. Because if we all listening on here and we believe in and trust in God for who he is, let me tell you something. He don't sleep and he don't slumber. So they can try to stun in front and act like that. Yeah, well, no, I mean, she did that. I didn't say that. I didn't, I, that's why I didn't commit to this. That's why. Okay. Mm-hmm, that's fine. Because I'm going to tell you two things going to happen. You're going to get it how you live. Because God is going to make sure he takes care of it because vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Let me tell y'all something. God covers all the bases. So when people try to hit you below the belt, when people try to come against you in these shady, crazy ways, God does not miss any of that. I guarantee you the Lord is going to make sure you're straight. So guess what? They may not apologize. They may, it may be a m- multiple reasons why they don't apologize. They might be weak. God forgive me, but there are just some people that are weak. And it just don't take responsibility. There are some people who won't apologize because they just don't know they did you something wrong, which is rare in these situations because they typically know what they did. But every now and again, people don't know. Right. And then there's the people that they're like, I don't think I did you nothing wrong. So I'm not going to apologize. I don't honor your feelings. See, that's why, y'all, we got to be careful who we are in relationship with, because When you are with somebody who does not honor your feelings, I didn't say acquiesce to your feelings and do what you said and totally agree. I did not say um, whenever you say jump, they say how high. I did not say that you were going to get along perfectly. And because that's what you wanted to do, he needed to do it too, or she needed to do it too. I said, she's going, he or she is going to honor your feelings. When people honor you, They create a space, a safe space for you to say, you know what? This is who you are. I honor this about you. You may not even get what they're doing. You may not even have an appreciation for what they're doing, but you have an appreciation for them. So when you see that something is happening and you, they may be hurting by something you did and you genuinely were not trying to hurt them. When you honor somebody and you respect somebody and when you are true man or woman of God, not the one that you're telling everybody, but when your heart is really pure after God, you don't get no rest when you know you hurt somebody, even if it wasn't your intention. I know that's how I am. If I really, if somebody literally told me like, Hey, you, you know, you hurt me and I I would address that immediately, man, that makes man just talking about it. I'm getting uncomfortable. I don't like that. That's not Christ like to do that. Because let me tell you, when I was immature and stupid and just running around like a chicken with my head cut off, I didn't care what I did to people. So when you when you really get filled with Christ and you're not stunting and acting like you love Christ. And so the world could think you love Christ. You don't feel good talking to people crazy. You don't feel good because even if it slips out, y'all, we not perfect. okay? we're not. I'm not perfect. I still be jacking this thing up, too. Now, don't get it twisted, though. I'm not about to be stunting like I'm getting all of this right. But when it's brought to my attention, then I at least try to address it. And even if every single thing they're saying, I absolutely do not agree with them. Okay, that's when I say, let me pick my battles when it comes to the who. Let me pick my battles and let me make sure I am no longer picking the person I'm allowing God to lead me and guide me in picking the person and I'm going to pick my battles. See, when people say pick your battles, that's basically saying, okay, you have free will. So you can choose if you're going to stick with the foolishness or you're going to, you know, you're going to let it go. That's, that's basically picking your battles is using your free will wisely. Okay. So we covered a lot today. Okay. So play this back. Listen to it again. Get the workbook. If you don't want to get the whole workbook, just get the workbook for this month on heartbreak. And we're going to really shell this thing out and really break it down. But I want you guys to remember a couple of takeaways for today. Number one, you are responsible for who broke your heart. 
You're not responsible with, for what they did to break your heart, but you are the person that has the heart in your chest. You have the heart that this person is walking into. They're welcome into your heart because you've allowed it, okay? So you are responsible for the who. It does not matter who is on your list, but now, number two, you have to address, do I have a type? Do I keep attracting this foolishness? Can, can I really be honest with myself about that? Well, that's what I like. Well, if you don't want to let go of what you like, then you're not going to be able to escape consistently getting your heart broken. Because I'm telling you, sometimes it's that one little tweak. It's that one little thing that you have to let go of and you will find the love of your life. Trust me, I made my tweak. I'm ready now. And and, and, and I'm a living witness, y'all. The minute you take these leaps of faith and you do the things that God is telling you to do, no matter how insane or crazy it may seem, that's when life begins. That's when life begins. So I don't know who needs to hear this, but the reason why your heart is broken repeatedly is because you keep allowing it. And I want you to understand that that can stop today. This is a place to be in your feelings. This is a place to be in your thoughts. This is the place to feel like, oh my God, this is the place to cry. This is the place to get revelation. Okay. And again, Take the meat and throw out the bone. If you don't feel like it applies, it doesn't. I'm not forcing anything on anybody. But what I am doing is making you aware. I'm telling you things I wasn't told. And I'm also telling you things that I was told and I ignored. You know, sometimes the person who God has for you, they might not live where you live. They might not be, they might not do what you think they should be doing. They might not. They might, they just might not be what you were thinking, but you got to get past that, you know? And I don't, you know what? I just have to say this. I was about to close, but the Holy Spirit is stopping me. If you are listening and God already revealed to you who this person was that, that, you know, you have to pursue or that, you know, this person been pursuing you and, and, and you just keep, you know, throwing them the Heisman. You don't want to be bothered. Listen to me. You want to marry your best friend. You don't want to, you don't want to marry somebody who um is you don't want to marry somebody that's not meant to be with you there are many people that can come into your life and love you they can pray with you they can be friends with you they can be all of these things to you but it's nothing like the person who when they smile your heart smiles there's nothing like the person that is the difference between the person who is so sweet and so nice oh I, you know and you, you get them nice things you have a good friendship that's one kind of person but it's another kind of person that you, you know, you just know it's from God, you know? So I I don't know who this is for, but if you are delaying that, that's on you. You could have what you want. You could have the love of your life, but if you're not taking action, if you're not do, making a move, you're going to keep getting your type. You're going to keep going out on them stupid dates. You're going to keep creating these new little temporary foolish situations and you know it's not your person if you know who your person is stop stop it just go ahead and handle your business because guess what you can act like it doesn't exist but i can guarantee you you have another heartbreak on the way because you will never have that peace until you are with the person that god has for you and 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 sometimes it's right under our nose sometimes we know it and we just act like we don't because we feel like we don't have all the pieces it's not all what we think it should be and you know Sometimes people are so irresponsible. They'll try to throw you off on somebody else because they're trying to avoid being with you. So you have to make sure that to avoid the who process going wrong and end you with the, ending up with a broken heart. You have to acknowledge if God is already speaking to you on this subject and you just don't want to receive it because you're still stuck on your type or you're still stuck on who you think it should be and how you think it should go. This is the time to let go of that. This is the time to show the Lord that you are serious about moving forward and that you will no longer continue. If you make the decree and you make the declaration now that this is not what you want, then then you're giving God the you're giving God the permission to say, "Okay, we're going to move forward. It's time for us to move on. It's time for you to get who you're actually supposed to be with, and this one ain't going nowhere." You know, or this is the one you need to finally pursue this person. You always know, go ahead and pursue them. Go get them. Do what you got to do. And, you know, that's for the men, of course. But, you know, and for the women, if, if you know that's what it is, then go ahead and roll with it. 
You know, because at this point in the game, y'all, if it's only dragged along and it's and it's only uh, prolonged, so to speak, is because you're just not doing what you need to do. So I think we talked a lot today about the who. We have a good understanding of the who. And um, I want you guys to meditate today on Psalm 147.3. That's what I want you to meditate on today. And um, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. And prepare for tomorrow. The question is, why can't you let it go? That's what we're going to talk about when it comes to a broken heart. Why can't you let it go? Guys, I, I love you guys. I'm so glad you, you stuck it out with me today. I hope you guys get your workbook so you can join us beyond this in the Facebook group where we really running it and chopping it up and getting to the bottom of it. Tomorrow is going to start a full on discussion on heartbreak. So we're going to be doing some new entries on that. But I thank you guys so much. And I hope that you guys join me back again tomorrow. And if you haven't get caught up on Moral to the Mean Mondays, why to Inspire Wednesdays and Mentor from Afar Fridays. And why to inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'mWiredToInspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five-star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspirationspecialist.life or I'mWiredToInspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.